All right, so password to the phone is zero, 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 and then okay. You'll come up to the screen, and when you get your phone for the first round of the tournament, you'll have your players' names instead of player A, B, and C. If you notice at the top left, it'll show your hole number, the par of the hole, and then also your group number. First up will always be player A. He'll be in that red caddy bib. Player B will be in the white caddy bib. Player C in that blue caddy bib. Player A, up first, you'll have a list of options of what club he is using. We're gonna select driver, enter. When he's addressing the ball, you will click addressing the ball, shot hit. You have an option of new player, same player, or in the hole. We'll select new player. Player A now has one stroke. Player B is up. Player B is gonna be using an iron this time. Enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. Player C is up. He's gonna be using a fairway wood this time. Enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. All three players now have one shot. So you'll start on that second shot. Hopefully player A will be hitting from the fairway. You'll click on player A and you have a variety of options. If he's not hitting from the fairway, you can select green, fringe, from a tee box. So that could just simply be an, another tee box. The bunker, rough, native area, which would be something like pine straw, and then water would be if he's hitting out of the water, does not count as a penalty stroke. And so for the water, that yep, could even be ahead. inside the red hazard stakes, but it's not gonna count as a penalty. He's gonna be hitting out of that water. And then other would be something like the cart path, maybe hitting out of a skybox, um, some different scenario that you won't see very often. Select the fairway, click enter, players addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. Player A now has two strokes, player B is up. Player B is gonna be hitting out of the rough. You can select deep rough or first cut. We'll select deep rough, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. Player C is up and we will select he's hitting from the bunker. And we can select if the bunker is around the green or if the bunker is in the fairway. We'll select fairway, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. Player A is now on the green, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. Player B, on the green, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. When you get to that last stroke, they're on the green. Player A is still on the green, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit. Now you can select in the hole, which we will, and it will ask you, did the shot really go in the hole? Yes, it did. Player A now has a four F, letting you know that the F stands for finish that hole. So let's finish up that player B and player C. Player B is still on the green, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, and so we'll select in the hole. Did the shot really go in the hole? Yes, it did. Player B continues on. Player C is on the green, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, at this point, we can utilize the tap-in feature. If he hit that fourth shot, it came really close and he's gonna just putt one more time, he's just gonna tap it in. So just for ease of access, we'll just click tap in, that'll add a next or another stroke. Tap in shot five, are you sure? Yes. All players are now in the hole and we have the selection to proceed to the next hole. We're on the next hole and shall, I'll show you guys a little bit about what the penalty drop and provisional will look like. Player A is up. He's gonna use his driver, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. Player A though is not sure if his ball stayed in bounce, so he's gonna go ahead and hit a provisional. You'll select player A again. You have the PDP section on the right. Go ahead and click that. And you have the option to select penalty, free drop, and provisional. We will select provisional. He's gonna hit his driver again, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. Player A now has a P for standing for provisional. As soon as you click on player A when he's up to hit again, hopefully in the fairway this time, it will ask, did the player use his provisional shot? And yes, we will enforce the penalty, or no, we will not enforce the penalty. 
the player will be using his first shot, not his provisional shot. So we'll select yes and show you how that automatically cal calculates that uh, provisional. So now it's asking where the player hit his provisional shot from. We'll say fairway, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. It automatically enforce that penalty, as you can see right there below. Player B is back up. He's going to use his driver, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. Player B already knows that his ball is out of bounds, no question, so he's going to take a penalty and he's just going to re-tee. Penalty, re-tee, and again it's going to ask what, what club, select driver, enter, addressing the ball, shot hit, new player. So when you select penalty, it automatically enforces a penalty as opposed to the provisional. It's going to ask if you will enforce that penalty. Player B is going to be up first. He's going to be on the green. Enter, addressing the ball, shot hit. He's going to go right in the hole. He's pretty good. Player A is going to be next up to putt. He's on the green, addressing the ball, shot hit. He's going to go in the hole as well. Now you can go back one stroke. Player A, actually that shot did not go in the hole. I thought it did, it did not. So if you see here, there's a check mark and I can actually unclick. And yes, it actually did not go in the hole. So I'm gonna remove that shot, press enter. Now he is no longer finished. He needs to putt one more time. He's back on the green, addressing the ball, shot hit. Now it really does go in the hole. I'm correct, he's back to finish that hole. Player C is playing really well. He's on the green, addressing the ball, shot hit. He goes right in the hole. All my players are finished. We'll go ahead and proceed to that next hole. A few last tips before you head out for your round. First thing, caddies are gonna be your best friend out there. If you have a question on that score, make sure you ask the caddy. If a player hits a 12 on a par three, I'm not gonna wanna ask that player. It's not gonna be that happy. So make sure you ask that caddy if you have any questions on the score, he'll be happy to help you out. Next thing, make sure you wear comfortable shoes. Y'all are gonna be out there for around five hours a day. And I promise you, if you don't wear comfortable shoes the first day, you're gonna make sure to before you show up on that next round. Next thing, rain gear. We always say it's not gonna rain, but if it does rain, make sure you have some type of rain gear on you, whether that be bringing an emergency poncho, a rain jacket. The only thing that we do not recommend is you bring an umbrella. Just tough to hold an umbrella, your radio, your phone, just kind of all at one. So we kind of uh, go away from the umbrella. Next thing, at every green side, there will be two chairs, one for you and also one for the standard bearer. Those are your chairs. If anyone's sitting in them, just please ask them to get up. They'll be happy to get up for you. And that is your chair time to relax and that's really the best place for you to be on where to stand when you're on that green. Make sure you stay off the green, go and hang out in the chair while those players are putting, just relax for a couple of minutes. You will be inside the ropes the whole time. That's one of the best experiences of being a walking scorer. And in addition to that, you have all the privileges that the players and the caddies do. So if there's food, water, anything that you need, make sure you take advantage of that, stay hydrated out there, and just enjoy the experience of really being inside the ropes. Nobody else is inside the ropes, just be sure to enjoy that when you're out there. Uh, when you finish your round, always go to that player scoring area where the players will finish at. Um, you can stand outside the trailer, inside the ropes. It's gonna be different every week. So just depending on what it looks like, just head to that player scoring area. When they get done, the players may have some questions. If they don't, you're just there just as a second piece if they need any, 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 uh, any questions on their score. Players will always thank you. So it's just a nice opportunity to get to know those players just a little bit better uh, before you head out. Radio chatter. So you're all gonna be on, on one channel. So radio chatter, let's please keep that to a minimum. No talking about, George, what's, what's for lunch today? Or what hole are you on? Keep radio chatter to a minimum. We're all on one channel. Make sure we get our radio calls in just efficiently. And so for a radio call, I would be using my radio for a ruling. If a player needs a ruling from a rules official, if I need first aid, or if I need a, a change to a score. And so a good radio call would be, guys, this is George, group four. I need a rules official. Or guys, this is George, group four. On the last hole, Turner was supposed to have a three, not a four, and they'll be able to help you out with that. So Scoring Central is gonna be your best friend throughout tournament week. They'll be able to help you out with really anything that you need when you're out on the golf course. 
uh, where, where to stand in the fairway, on the tee box. We always just like to say, don't stand directly behind that player. Most of y'all play golf, so if someone's standing behind you, you can always tell. Even if you can't see them, you can always say, man, someone's standing behind me, aren't they? So just make sure you don't stand directly behind that player. We always like to say 20 to 30 yards back and then either to that left or right side of that player so he just doesn't feel like you're just right there behind him. When you head out for your round, everyone will have an evac plan with them. Make sure you utilize that. If you do hear that horn blow, you will get a message from that, walk, from that scoring central chair letting you know that the horn has blown. Refer to your evac plan. It'll tell you right where to go, and that way you can get uh, you, the golfers, and the caddies off the golf course as quickly as possible. Tea times for the weekend. Everyone wants to know, when's my tea time for the weekend? When's my tea time? We will not know until Friday night, once we finish up, how many groups we have. Your walking score chair will let you know as quickly as possible what your tee times are for that weekend. Uh, but please do hold off until kind of Friday night. Walking score will relay that information to you as quickly as possible. And then last thing for you guys, we will have our operations truck at every event. Make sure you stop by. It's always a great place to come and hang out, meet some players, meet some other spectators, meet some more volunteers. Uh, we always have good, nice, cold drinks on the truck. So come by, meet some people. It's really a walking. Uh, kind of walking museum that we go kind of week in and week out with. So come by the truck, say hi. And then lastly, just have fun out there. You know, you guys are doing a job walking, scoring for us, but just enjoy it. Be inside the ropes, enjoy the time meeting with the players and let us know if there's anything else we can do to make your experience a little bit better. Thanks.